what's up guys in this video i'm doing an unboxing and review of the darwin fpv baby ape pro if you're looking for an affordable fpv drone this one comes in at only 90 dollars <laughs> So let's open this up and see what we got. All right, set of propellers. Looks like some battery strap, a battery strap and zip ties. And here's the drone. This is a good size little drone. The, th the frame actually looks pretty thick. We have some nice LEDs on here and a little lens cap on the camera. So this is the Baby Ape Pro. There is just a Baby Ape. And the main difference between the two is the camera. So this one has a Caddx Ant and this camera is a little bit better than the other camera that comes on the other one. Um, otherwise, I th I'm pretty sure it's all the same components. Before we go any further with what's on the drone, we also have a little business card kind of thing from Darwin FPV and ESC and flight controller specifications. So the flight controller ESC board that we have on this is a 25 by 25, so just a standard toothpick flight controller. And this has a 15 amp output ESC. The Connection for the flight controller is right down here, and that's how you would connect it to Betaflight. Right above the flight controller, we have the VTX. This is a 25 milliwatt to 200 milliwatt VTX, so I'll probably just keep this on 200. And then between the motor and the ESC, there's also LEDs. So that could look cool. These motors are uh, no name motors. These are 1104 4300 KV two to three S brushless motors. And the props that come with it are Gemfan three blade, 1.5 millimeter props. So yeah, pretty straightforward little drone. Again, the only difference between the Baby Ape Pro, which is this one, and the Baby Ape is the camera. And this is a Caddx Ant, so this is a 1200 TVL camera, whereas if you went with the Baby Ape, you'd have a 700 TVL camera, so you'd have a little bit less resolution, whereas this one has a little bit higher resolution. Here's a quick little side-by-side -side with my Tiny Hawk Freestyle. It's a little bit bigger. I'm assuming that this one will be a little bit faster just because this can handle 3S and this one handles 2S. The only additional part that you're gonna need to get for this drone is a receiver. I have a couple extra R9MM receivers laying around, so I'm gonna get this soldered up. For reference on soldering your receiver to this flight controller, in this little manual, there is a pinout for the flight controller, so you can kind of see how different receivers would be soldered up. So I'm just gonna go by this, I'll get it soldered up, and then we'll take this out for a flight test. All right, so I got the receiver all hooked up back here. I have it in some heat shrink and I have it right above the flight controller and below this battery strap. So that's kind of holding it in place. You could take a zip tie and zip tie it to the top of the frame or zip tie it to the bottom of the frame, but that's how I have mine in there. And then I have the antennas coming up through the back here. They have a little cutout in the TPU mount for the antennas and they included these tubes. So I have the antennas going through here and then back here we have the VTX antenna. So everything's all nice and secure. I'm using one of these battery straps. This is a battery strap that I had laying around from HGLRC, but they do include their own LiPo strap. It's a little bigger than this, so that's kind of why I went with this. They also have this rubber band that you could use. I don't fully trust rubber bands with LiPos, so I'm using this one. Um, speaking of, the battery that I'm using in this flight that you're about to see is this iFlight Full Send 450 3S battery. So before we go fly, let's just see what it weighs. And this is with a receiver installed, 76 grams. And then with this battery, this is a 453S, you're looking at 115 grams. So I'm gonna attach this, get my goggles out, 
controller and we'll go take this for a flight. So final thoughts on this drone, yeah? It has pretty good power for a drone this size. With these 453S batteries, I was getting very good punch out in about four minute flight times doing freestyle and five to six minutes with lighter flying. I think 450 is the perfect battery size for this drone and I'll leave a link to these down in the description. This camera and VTX are pretty good. This is actually the same camera that I use in my $150 five inch freestyle drone build. I wish I had the base version of this drone so that I could compare the camera quality between the two versions, but I think really the only difference that I'll see is that this one has higher quality than the other one. I wasn't getting much breakup when flying. Then again, I wasn't flying far away because, well, this isn't a long range drone. It's meant for closer range freestyle flying. I crashed it a couple times into the ground. You saw one of the whacks in that video. and the frame is still very solid. Nothing broke or came loose after crashing. The only damage on the drone is on the end of the arm. 
and you can actually 3D print bumpers for the arms to protect them. Speaking of 3D printed parts, if you have a naked GoPro, I bet this drone could carry it if you had the right 3D printed mount for it. One complaint is that you're limited with camera tilt. Since the top plate comes out to here, you can only tilt the camera this much. So if you like aggressive camera tilt, you won't be able to get it with this top plate here. Not only that, but since everything behind the camera is so limited with space, the VTX connection plug is actually blocking the camera from tilting freely. So you're pretty much able to get two camera angles with this drone. Either no tilt at all, where the camera would be completely flat, or this tilt right here. And my only other issue, and this honestly was probably just due to the amount of wind, is the tune. I was getting a little bit of prop wash, but nothing not manageable. This is the kind of thing that would probably just require some quick PID tuning to fix. All right, real talk. For 80 to $90, I really don't think you're gonna find a comparable pre-built three inch freestyle drone like this. If you're new to the hobby or just looking for a very affordable freestyle drone to practice with, you can't go wrong with this drone. Keep in mind that if you do buy it, you will have to buy a receiver as well because this doesn't come with one already installed. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and if you have any questions, put it in the comment section. I always try to respond to as many comments as I can.